Hello and welcome back to the fish locker out on the bank. Now um, I come in, this is a local reservoir to me and I, I, got, I was recommended it by a subscriber. I'm coming out a walk around with a jay with my little lad and then I fished it a couple of days later and I had a, I had a great day for a, for a first time on. Um, had a few bream, had a little pike and then got back to the van and realised that there was no audio to any of the video which was absolutely gutting and then um, straight after that we had like four or five days of real heavy wind and heavy rain so I couldn't get back so I've come today it's still windy and it, the, the water is in flood so it's not ideal conditions but I've come with my little lad come here we've come to catch some what have we come to catch? fishies fishies <laughs> so um, you want to go and play up there just play with your trains for a minute good lad so I've come down and the um, first thing I did was I made up some ground bait some of my homemade ground bait and all that is it's just like a loaf of bread just rubbed up in my hands the same as I do for mullet and then um, some broken up cornflakes any old bits and bobs that I have in the kitchen that stay like the ends of a loaf instead of throwing away I just keep them and then um, I mixed in a few 8 mil halibut pellets and um, a bit of generic like swim steam something like that just here I think it was feeder X something. It's, um, I don't mix much of it in probably that's probably a quarter of the um, ingredients all you want is you want something that's going to break down in the water so that something that when you you mash it together like that it holds but as soon as it hits the water just breaks up into particles. Help. You can help, you are helping. And all I've done was I just threw out half a dozen balls in two separate areas, one straight out and one slightly to the left. The reason I do two areas is so that um, I can be fishing one while the other one's resting. And then all I'm doing is I'm just fishing a method feeder, which is just one of these. And from the end of there I've got a snap swivel and I've got some hook lengths. Now the other day when I came, I did a bit of experimentation and I used some um, some mono hook lengths and I used some braid hook lengths just to see which worked best. I also, I alternated the size and I found that on that day about 10 inches was best. And all I've got on, on one rod is I've just got maggots, mixed maggots on the hook and on the other rod with the braid hook lengths I've got hair rigged worms. Um, I was just setting up, I just managed to get get some ground bait out, get my rods out, just get the camera set up and I had a take straight away and I've just had a bream it was about, I don't know, three and a half pound on the maggots so already we've we've had a fish which was good hopefully it's a, it's a good sign of things to come now um, the wind's coming in from this direction so I've had to put the camera here behind the, bro behind the brolly it isn't ideal so the sun's behind me if I can later in the day I'll move the camera around to the other side so you'll get a better view but, um, yeah that's, that's all it is I'll talk you through little things as I as I zoom. The uh, the ground bait. One of the big mistakes I see people make is they put it all in a tub and then scoop it in the water. I like to use the water that's in the lake. I don't use bottled water. Really. Um, only add it a little bit at a time. Don't put loads in because once it's in, you can't take it out. Put a little bit in if it's not enough. Put a little bit more until you've got a nice. See this? This this isn't too wet and it isn't too dry. It's just crumbly and then when you mash it, it holds together. That'll hold onto a method feeder, but as soon as it hits the water, it'll break into pieces. And that's that. If you can see there, I've got the rods laid down, pointing slightly in that direction. Now the wind is running in this direction, so you've got like a little bit of a tow of the water. So what's happening is when I'm casting out, there is becoming like a bit of a belly in the line if you tighten up too much all that happens is the force of the water against the line causes your feeder to bump along I don't really want that so what I've left is I've left enough of a belly in the line so that it's it's tight enough that registers a bite on the line but it's not too slack all I've done and what I like to do like this is rather than if it was a really calm day I would have it tight to the rod tip and I would be sat watching it 
but as it's a bit slack today and I'm fishing with two rods all I've done is I've backed them right off so there's there's literally no tension in the line at all it's that way when I see a registered bite like that I've got time to go down and pick it up and all I do is I hold the spool and lift into the fish and then once I've got it on I'll tighten my drag it's not it might not be the way that you choose to do it but that's the way that I do it it's the way that you'll see me do it today I always kind of chuckle when it comes to carp anglers because pretty much if you can think of any task to do wild carp fishing someone's invented a tool that they can sell to you now you see these these hair rigs that I've made up at home all it is is just just 20 pound braid with a little swivel on the end a little size 10 barbless hook and I've used the snell knot to create like a little hair rig loop it's the same type of knot that I would use for making my, my live bait rigs for fishing from the shore all I would do is I would just tie my little hook onto here and then I've made this which I use to poke through my boilies because it's got like a little sharp end on now let me see where I've snipped it to a sharp end and I used a little nail file and I cut a little notch in it that you can see is that, is that birdie back to steal them maggots? and all you do is you'll just take your little toe put your hair rig loop into that notch hold it Hold it like that and then I just use a little piece of stick like that there you go took me two minutes to make just a piece of copper wire with a little point on the end and if you can see like a little tiny notch the notch is just cut like that But I use that as well for, you see like here look, I've, I've hair rigged a boilie. If I'm going to hair rig a lobworm, I'll just show you that now. Just got a little, a little pack of worms that me and James got last night. Just went out patting for him. And all he'll do. I'm putting a worm on a hook, James. Do you want to come and help me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you come and stand there and just make sure I'm doing it right. And all you'll do is you just take your worm like that, poke your little needle into it, slide it down maybe half an inch, three quarters of an inch, poke it out the other side. Like that look. And then do the exact same thing again. You just be careful. You make sure none of them worms escape, all right? Same again. Hook your hair rig loop onto your little notch. You be careful they don't escape. Just like that. And then all you'll do with your little loop you are helping James, you just make sure them worms don't escape. Okay. Two is escaped. Two is escaped? You have to push them back in. Go and get them then. Where are they? Here. Where did they, where did they go? Here. Got a little tiny piece of stick. Oh no, it's a deep. It's a deep, Dada. Oh, quick. Oh no. Pick him up then. Oh no. You pick it up. You pick it up. No. Why not? I need a, need a hissies. I need a, need a, need a hissies too. I want it. I want it. Just like that. And just say cheese. Say cheese. Just say cheese. Cameraman will make.
It always happens that. I'll just put a sandwich in my mouth. Now that is a colossal bream. Oh, my word. That's definitely a PB. <laughs> like I say, I was halfway through my sandwich and my cup of tea. When the rod went, it's always the same in it. Oh God, like I say, I always have it in a snap so you can just unclip it and move it aside that was on that was on hairy globworm perfectly hooked just in the bottom lip now look at the size of that what an absolute corker now look if you can see there's a the lobworm Look at the size of that. What an absolute beauty. I'm going to have to get that on the scales. Look at the size of that, James. That's a big one, isn't it? It Yeah, yeah. This is all wet too. You need. If you're going to be weighing them in a the sling, you need to wet the sling first. Oh. Here we go. Six point eight five, which is roughly six pounds fourteen ounces. Six pound bream. Well, that's fantastic that they've come on the feed like that. I want you. You just stay where you are, James. Oh. This one doesn't feel as big. Still a lovely fish. Look at that. There's the maggots just in the corner of its mouth. What a cracker. What fantastic condition these fish are in. I'll put this one down to being about two pound. Not long casted this one out. It's just in the process of putting a little rod down there for a perch. This one tore away. Feels like another decent breed. Feels like another brain because it's like a lollopy fight. I haven't seen it yet. It's another nice brain. Yeah, I have got a fishy, James. You can see how recent it was that I cast it out because there's still that much bait on the feeder. Hair rigged lobworm. This is actually covered in lice. Don't know if you can see them on its body. The other side's not so bad. Here's again, look, another cracking bream. So this one would be easy a couple of pounds. 
You can see all them little tiny lice on each side. One last look before we put her back. Stunners, aren't they? I'm going to slip it back in this next swim. Like I say, that's all it was. Just a little lobworm on a herring. Considering the conditions, we're not doing too badly today. Let's get this bait cast out because bream are shoaling fish. So generally where you get one there will be others. It's best to capitalise on that. Now, you haven't seen what I've been doing, but every single time I've, I've either had a fish or brought it in or I've cast it out, I've chucked out a little ball of ground bait just to keep the feed constantly going. So if they are in there and rooting around, they don't run out of feed and leave. So it keeps them in the area. Anyway, let's talk and more fishing. Like I said, I just, um, just I brought that last fish in. I said that I was just setting up a little rod to try for a perch down in these reeds here. All I've been doing is I've been just chucking a few maggots every now and again. And there we are. <laughs> it might only be a little one, but target species is target species. Perfect little guy, isn't he? If you can see, he's mullered them maggots. Now I knew there was perch in here. I was hoping they were just going to be a little bit bigger. I thought this would happen. Just keep getting loads of like little pecking bites, and it's just these little skimmer bream unfortunately unfortunately when the little fish like this move in there's not much you can do you've just got to fish through them it's better than catching now isn't it <laughs> there you saw again it was just on just on hook maggots Now on that little perch rod, all I've got is I've just got a little tiny waggler float and about two foot below it I've actually put a lobworm now to see if I can pick up a bigger perch. It's not likely to happen but if it does it'd be brilliant. As you can see, the wind's picking up so I've had to move the camera around and it's making light detection really difficult. But it doesn't seem to be putting the fish off too much. Now this one is a real war horse of a bream. He's covered in scars. Wow. That is a really big fish. It is a big fish, isn't it? He's got a bit of a, got a bit of a crooked back, hasn't he? And he's got a few wow. real big scars on him. Yeah, he's a big fish. A bit of a wonky, really wonky other side as well, isn't he? He's a big one, isn't he? Oh, he's Do you want to give him a stroke? I uh, know. Okay. He's uh, You can see the hairy lobworm. Yeah, look at his tail. Like Look, Barbara's hooks just popped straight out. Wow. I'd say he'd be another three pounder at least. Let's get this guy back. Like I say, that was just just a hair rigged lobworm on a method feeder. So, so far that's definitely been the bait of the day, hasn't it? The yeah, maggots have had a few, but the worms are doing the better fish. Let's get back out and get another one. Right, before I'd even had a chance. Before I'd even had a chance to get that other rod in. 
this one had gone. So, unclip the trace, put the rod out of the way. There's another beauty. Got a bit of a damaged dorsal, this one. Yeah, it's another beauty, isn't he? He must be dead. He's big. What? Is oh, he you can see the, the worms. Uh, sorry, the maggots. Just in its mouth. The maggots. A few of them have had these black dots on. I'm not quite sure what they are. Let's uh, pop this hook out. They look fabulous. Perfect. Pop straight out. Let's get him just. I'll just show you again how I'm. I'll just show you again how I'm hair rigging these lobworms. There's my little tool, and I've just slid a couple of little worms up. Now, just put in my my loop on my hair rig into the little notch, and just sliding the worms on. Just like that. Now all I'm doing is taking a little bit of stick and just sliding it inside the loop. slide the tool out. And there you go. Perfect. Well, my perseverance with the lobworm on a float worked. There you go. And there's the culprit right there. Now he's not big but he's perfect isn't he? What perfect little fish. Look at the size of his mouth. Get this gorge on him and get him back. What a brilliant little bonus fish. I'm getting... Easy, easy, easy. Getting quite a lot of these now. These little silver skimmers. See there on the maggot. Now the maggot does seem to be picking up the smaller fish. Unfortunately, there are a lot of these in the swim at the minute because I'm just getting loads of little tiny rattling bites. Now, it's inevitable that you're going to get little fish. And like I say, you've just got a fish thrown. But the lobworms do seem to be picking out the bigger bream. So that's maybe the way to go, or maybe. I'll keep going with maggots on this for another, I don't know, half an hour. And if I keep picking up small ones, I'll just switch it to lobworm. And we'll, we'll see if we can get away from the smaller ones. Oh, that's another thing. It's. Um, started raining on and off here. Now one thing you want to do with your ground bait, when you've got the ground bait made up and you've got it to the consistency that you like, don't leave it out in the sun because it'll become too dry and obviously don't leave it out in the rain because it'll become too wet. I don't know if you can see the rod tip in this but it's, it's like a nodding lunging fight you get from a brain. Wow, another big fish, eh? Yeah! Again, a bigger one on lobworm. Wow, really? Wow, watch out the way. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. look. As you can see, he's got a bit of a wound on his side. Now look. I'm not sure if it's coming from like a cormorant or if it's like a lamprey. But, um, again, lobworm. I'm definitely going to change those maggots over to a lobworm and then we'll, uh, we'll see how we go ahead. Let this one go. Well, at least this time I've got to finish my sandwich. Another lovely conditioned bream, but again, 
pretty big wound up its side. They do, really do deliver a fantastic hook up these hair rigs. Every single time has been right in the bottom lip. There look. There look. This one looks like a pike wound. See where it's scratched here by its anal fin? Let me turn him over. See that wound there? Mm -hmm. I think a pike's definitely had hold of this guy. Another cracker, isn't he? Put this one being about well, maybe over three. Might not go far, but it'll be over three pound. Let's just uh, sit him down there in the net. Yeah, the. Um, Really glad that I gave it a try, and it doesn't take five minutes to make them rigs up. Just, uh, just ten to twelve inches of braid, with a little barrel swivel on one end, and a little size ten barbless hook. And um, all I did was I just made a little loop in the end, and then tied it on with a snell knot, so the loop is right at the back of the hook. Dead simple. <laughs> You've seen it work. It's caught, um, it's caught some cracking fish today. Let's get back out and get this fish back. Alright, well we've, we've had a cracking day on the bream. Uh, best thing about it is that original bucket of ground bait that I made up has, has lasted me really well. Um, even though even though I kept using like a good fist fist sized piece every time I put a every time I put a method feeder out and I, I hand fed quite a few balls every now and again. I, um, I've had that good a day that I'm, I'm not even going to mix in some more up. I'm just going to just going to call it a day when it's run out. Now they do say that you should never leave uh, feeding fish, but when you've had a cracking day like this, I don't see there's any reason that um, to not consider it consider it a good day. Just all in. John. <laughs> Amazingly, you know, I was saying that there are carp in here, but we haven't seen any. Well, just after I'd done my sign off, managed to hook one. <laughs> it absolutely screamed off. Got to say it's got to be well in excess of ten pound. Could even go, could even go fifteen. Oh, wow. That's so big. <laughs> He's actually got a bit of a deformed face, which could be from a bad hook hold. <laughs> da, da, da. It's a big fish, eh? It's called a carp. Da, da. She's a carp. <laughs> Can you believe it? Landed on a little size 10. What a beauty.
14 and a half pound. What a fantastic way to finish. <laughs> yeah, I just missed just missed the perch. And I was filming, I was just saying, oh Christ save. And then that was it, one rod went, second rod went. What a perfect way to end. <laughs>